Where, where's the clap supposed to be? So I said, it's fam, RI3D, day two. There we go, okay. It's fam, RI3D, day two. Don't even worry about it. I hope there's somebody to do sick rotating. Oh. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this is where the, those dimensions are defined. Yeah. So we definitely think okay. increasing that, and then looking into ways we can increase the depth. It has to it has to extend past our frame so we can put it on the rocket. So that's the idea is that there's gonna be a hinge right yeah. here and the whole thing is gonna flip down to stay within the frame. And then there's gonna be like a just a string down to a window motor here to pull it up and keep it up. Then the arm is driven by a sprocket over here. Down to chain, uh, that's what Luke's working on right now, is the motor to drive that. We think it should go together pretty quick. Um, basically, we've got a couple of tubes and a yeah, couple that, that of Yeah, that doesn't seem that complicated. Yeah. So. Only one side is running. Yep, it's tank right Oh, it's tank okay. Well, they're both going in the correct direction, so that's good. No, I didn't reverse anything. It works. We're yes. good. We have a we functioning drivetrain. This box yeah. is the frame like perimeter. This is a four foot box. Okay. Right, so we've got plenty of room. Oh, well actually that is an option. Can I move it back about two inches? So it straddles that gap. So there's a bar behind the vertical support and the bar in front of the vertical support. You see what I'm saying? We don't have enough to make another one. So be sure of yourself. Uh, Confirm price, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. That's why I get to take like eighth of an inch off here. Oh my god. An eighth, an eighth of an inch? Yeah, something like that. Hopefully the next cut will be better because we got to do it again. What is this for? This is going to be put on the arm and the reason we need to cut here is so that our bearings that are controlling the, uh, the wheels yeah. they don't have, have some clearance. So if we didn't have this cut here, wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Yeah. What are you guys doing? I'm trying to image the uh, radio. And for some reason the radio just doesn't want to do that. So I've, I've been installing software for the last two hours. Trying to get this to work. It hasn't really worked yet, it's but it worked more than I expected it to. And this is all in the name of trying to get the webcam to work. Yes, <laughs> because, <laughs> because it doesn't. It, work it won't on. show up on the dashboard when we just plug it into the Rio. So we were trying to that would be too easy. configure it through the radio. Look at this. Look at these birds. Now I got to take them all off. Yeah. And then we'll have an arm set. That will be great. It's a very detailed design. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what this big drill bit is. Exciting. What are you doing? We are adding more chamfers to the corners here to make them fancy. Probably we're doing a lot of the small parts construction. Basically, we need all the, you know, these the churros of the, the box. As long as we can get that all put uh, like separately put together, and then we have a lot of the pieces that key and got plasma cut that we're currently like deburring a lot of it. So a lot of it right now is just cleaning up our cuts so that we can put things together. Any progress? Some, yes, we are on the current 
actually debugging some of my code and trying to see if um, some abstractions I've written around handling the game pad are going to work right. So. I am attaching the battery strap. Colin taught me how to use rivets. There's a way to Gone forever. It's still in a tip. Don't even worry about it on our. My buttons do work. This is the cut and file um, hatch plate grabber. So you can go in through the hole in the middle of the hatch, spin this up, and this catches around the hatch. And then when you pull back, you pick it up. And then to deposit it, you drive up, put it onto the Velcro, spin it down. This plate makes sure that you're applying pressure on the Velcro, and then after that, the uh, plate is just resting on here, so you can pour it. Colin, how Colin. exactly did you do this? Did you reverse engineer that? Yes. Explain it. There's PDFs online. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay, so I googled Vax Versaplanetary Encoder, and I got to the Versaplanetary Integrated Encoder website, and then I downloaded the info page, and I said instructions, and then it had a nice table that said exactly what each pin was, and then I soldered to the correct pins. Do you think we should like... Okay, well, what I'm doing is I'm assembling the uh, hatch panel grabber mechanism thing. Uh, so I'm just attaching this bracket to this uh, thing. This is going to have a pulley on the servo, which goes to a timing belt, which goes to this, which turns this, which turns this, uh, and the other thingy that's on it. This thingy. Uh, and that's going to be our mechanism. Is it better? That's the issue. Is mine going any further into the metal itself? Here's it, yeah. Just got to make sure. We are, we have two plates and, um, that's These churros funny. will go between them, and it's going to make a little kind of cradle for our volunteer. Yeah, we're constructing the the shooter part of our arm, so we can. Oh, that's in. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Flush. Um, is it worth it, friends, to put this on the ground and drive it for for a bit? Yes. If only for the morale boost. Yes. <laughs> Enabling. I think I'm very happy with how far we've gotten considering we have a driving robot in the middle of day two. I am, I'm ready. Let's do this. Where's Colin? Colin will say we're like three days we're behind schedule. Days. I am installing the signal light. Most important part of the robot right here. Hey, can I get a zip tie somebody? This is not the time for feelings, but rather the time for logic. Just edit that. I think we're on a pretty good track. I think, so we've got about six hours until midnight. We've got like all of our parts and some things are starting to look like the things that we had, which is really exciting. Um, but we're, uh, we're behind where I'd like to be. I, I think, I don't think that we're gonna have it fully assembled by midnight, but I think we will shortly after. So I think it's, I'm happy with where we're at. Could be better, but like Andrew said, we've got a rules legal robot right now, so that's pretty neat. A yieldable, a yieldable wheel. It is a yieldable. Are wheel. you just looking at synonyms, synonyms for compliant? For compliant. I need that yieldable wheel. Wait, I got this. I got this. Yieldable, yieldable. Yeah. We're taking one step higher. <laughs> Absolutely. A docile disc. <laughs> yes. There you go. Docile disc. Docile disc. This is for the arm, right? I believe so. It has this gearbox, which includes an encoder, so that we can see how far it's rotated, and then there's a chain reduction on the arm itself. 
I am mounting the motor that will make the arm move up and down. Uh, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to put a hinge on a bar so that I can put this thing and let's go go flat. flat, flat, flat. He's working on the hatch panel mechanism. Um, we wanted to have uh, this articulating side to actually move up and down so we can keep it outside of our frame perimeter and then when it goes down, it stays inside of our frame perimeter. Translation. <laughs> um, yeah, so we just got the camera working. Um, Had some CSA help. Yes, thank you, Alan. <laughs> um, so we can now just do a regular teleap drive during the sandstorm period we have to drive if we want to. You know, yes, you don't have to drive blind, literally. Please tell me you're kidding. No. That's no. That's where the motor is going. That's, the That's where the motor is supposed to go. With the wheels. That's not going to work. Nope. So did we get the whole issue with the motor fix? It was just yeah. too far forward? Yeah, this yeah. crossbar was too far forward. So just moved it back and now it's good. So right now we are uh, coercing the vertical supports into the right shape before There's we rivet them. Slightly bowed oh. outwards. Yeah. Oh. So this is bringing them back in. We're just gonna rivet them in place. Yeah. I've like gone home from the bottom thing. Actually, that's why. Darn yeah. sturdy. Yeah. I get to pull. Oh, it. I like this. That's a robot. I mean, this is. Uh, we are going to attach the arm to the robot. Uh, no, 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 we're not. Uh, one's coming. Uh, <laughs> now we're dead. <laughs> we need I'm hair. sorry. We're, we're putting the face. arm together, which is a really because yeah, that if we can get the arm together tonight, oh my god, that's such a huge that's such a huge step towards where we need to be because all we have to do now is just get the electrical to work up on there, and that's pretty much a robot. We have a robot. We have a robot. We, we have, have a robot. We need range of motion test. That's All right. <laughs> it's not a very hard, hard stop. Yes. Yes. Okay. You're the worst. Four yeah. Feet yeah. Four feet is okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in, boys. <laughs> we have a robot. So we're trying to decide like the, how the electronic board interfaces with the rest of the robot when it comes to things like getting out of the repair and if that's worth doing. You, are you going to file for the line? That was interesting. No. <laughs> Here's what we're looking at. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. It's like we, it's almost like we planned it. <laughs> I mean, we kind of eyeballed it. We eyeballed it like three times. And it seemed good. Fam News Daily. Yes. Robot Day 2. As you can see, our robot is coming together quite well. Andrew Dickinson will be installing, reinstalling the electrical board very shortly. We expect to have a completed robot by tomorrow night. Thank you. Back to you at the station.